Okay guys, James from True North Okanagan here. Today is the day we're installing the AV snorkel on the True North rig. It's a little bit scary, but we're gonna get it done. So I just grabbed everything out of the box. And this is what we have that came with it, the AV snorkel. We have the snorkel itself. We have the cap. And then we're just gonna go through and see what we have in here. So it comes with your instruction manual. Some stickers it looks like. The bracings or the brackets for the snorkel to actually mount to the Jeep. The black trim piece that goes over the cut. And this looks like it is for attaching the cap to the actual snorkel. We have a bunch of washers and some rivets to attach the, um, the trim piece. <coughs> oh. And then we have the actual bracket that will attach the snorkel you know, to the rack. Okay, so that's everything that came in the box. I'm just gonna go collect all the things necessary to do the install and we'll go over those in a second. So the next step is we're going to get everything measured out. We're gonna get the template all cut up and put on to the hood. Unfortunately, as mentioned in the previous video, some of this is going to get cut out, but I think it'll be worth it. Okay, guys, so we have it all taped up here. This is just to help protect the hood and the paint and the deco from all the things we're going to be doing to it, especially the cutting. So, as the instructions say, 23 millimeters from the latch pocket tangent. As you can see here, it's this, this, the start of it is this like, um, this where it starts to divot down. As you can see here, right when it starts to divot down. So we got our little ruler here, measured the 23 millimeters over. We got the line here, and then that's where we start taping down our template. So I'm gonna get that secured now and then we'll get to the drilling part. Okay, so we got the template all taped down. We got a little bit of a mark around it just to make sure we know where we're going. And the next step is to do some punches where these X's are. And that's where we're gonna do a pilot uh, hole, drill pilot hole. And then we'll move on to the cutting out portion. Drill pilot holes using the 532nd drill bit. It is worth noting that there's two layers of metal that you have to drill through. And we're just going to go right into that pilot hole and start cutting out this template. Using the one and three quarter hole saw drill bit, cut into the hood where the template indicates. You'll have to cut through two layers of metal. Using a cutoff wheel, either on a grinder or a Dremel, cut out the rest of the template. Unfortunately, my Dremel overheated, which required me to switch to the grinder with a cutoff wheel. 
Okay, so we finally got this part off. As you can see, this is just the insulated backing. So the next step is that there's a segment on the second layer underneath the hood that has to be trimmed back about a, an inch or half an inch. So we're gonna get that taped up and then we're gonna grind it. Draw the cut line approximately one quarter inch lower than the bend of the hood. Once the rest of the hood is marked off, remove using cutoff wheel. Okay guys, so now we have to take out the air box. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove this or loosen this clamp here. And then we're gonna take out these two bolts that hold the, the hose in. And then we'll take, we'll unclamp the air box lid and then basically you just pull it out. So that's what we're gonna do now. There are four clamps that need to be undone prior to removing the air box lid. On the left hand side, there are two easily viewed clamps that need to be removed. On the right side, there are two hidden clamps that you'll need to reach in at the bottom of the airbox hood to remove. Okay. So we're just gonna lift this part up. I'm just gonna get this unsecured from here. There we go. Looks like there's a clamp here that we have to disconnect to. Awesome. Right up. Oh, one loose. And there we go. Air box is out. Once the air box is out, begin mounting your brackets to the snorkel using the provided hardware. Remove the fender bolts using an M10 socket in preparation for test fitting the snorkel. For the 3.6 liter gas models, you will need to drill out the two rivets that attach the factory snorkel to the air box. When it comes to waterproofing the air box, there are four holes that you need to be aware of. There are three large grommet holes and one small drain hole. For daily use, AEV recommends you leaving these drain holes open. However, in the instructions for extreme water use, AEV recommends you seal these holes completely. Okay, so we, we drilled out those holes with the 5 30 second drill bit and we put in the, the, the larger rivets that came with the with all the nuts and bolts and stuff. And now it's time to silicone the entire 
edge and try to make it as waterproof as we can. I'm gonna do that off camera just because it's messy and then I'll come back when we start to get it placed in there. We got these edges all painted up. No rust gonna happen there. The next thing is we're gonna to to get the snorkel into the engine. Now, as you can see, off camera, I filled the drain holes and I siliconed it all up. So now it should fit perfectly in here. So we're gonna get installed here. Next step is to install the AEV trim ring. Place the AEV trim ring on the hood and adjust it so that the visual gap between the hood and the snorkel is even. Mark the location of the holes on the hood using a pen. Using a punch and a 1 8 drill bit, create the holes for the rivet. Paint the holes with touch-up paint and install the AEV trim ring using the supplied stainless steel rivets. Okay, so the plastic trim is on. It was fairly easy. Now all I'm going to do is go back into the engine, reconnect all the air intake stuff, um, get everything tightened down, and then we're going to work on the cap and just securing it to the actual Gobi rack. Okay guys, so... The GoPro and the iPhone keep turning off due to heat. It is like 35 degrees out. So we're gonna try our best to get this done for you. And now the big challenge is securing this to the Gobi rack. You can see that. So we're gonna get into that. So I tried my very best to get this on. It, it caught the threads for about 30 seconds and then it popped off and I gave it everything I had. <laughs> I, used, I used so much force and I was actually worried that I was gonna break the bolt in there. So what I did, ended up going to the hardware store it's the M8 1.25. That's the bolt that uh, Jeep uses. And then I just got it in a longer bolt pattern. So there was tons of thread to get uh, locked in there. So all I did was thread it in, put a washer down, and it works out great. It's held on nicely, it's secure. I'm going to give it some touch-up paint just to make it look more aesthetic. And I don't think it would rust, but we'll that will help for sure. And then the last thing was just putting on the cap and it's just with this ratchet uh, strap, this new one they have now. AUV is giving up the new ones. I think they listened to the people and stopped using those silver hose clamps. So that is the AUV snorkel install. I wanna thank you all for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, subscribe and share and stay tuned for more content. Thank you so much.